guys, it's Kaz here and today I'm doing my October wrap up. So in October I read eight things. For like the first half of the month I felt like I was getting nowhere with my reading. To be fair I just wasn't spending much time reading as you will find out in my favourites video when you see how many random things I watched. But I did sort of speed up towards the end of the month. So I did manage to read six things on the 2019 TBR. First of all I read The Rise of Nine by Pitticus Law. I read the previous book straight before this for the Tome Topple readathon, that's not what it's called. Tome Infinity and Beyond readathon. So I jumped straight into the next one so I didn't forget stuff. And yeah, I really enjoyed this series. The first book's a little bit like too YA, too much romance, but then it gets good, it gets cool. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of them, but not yet because only two of them was on my TBR for 2019, so you know. This deals with powers, aliens, cool stuff going on. It's an old series, you've probably heard of it. Next I read Far From The Tree by Robin Benway and this one I just, I needed to cleanse my palette. I needed a contemporary because I read loads of sci-fi last month for the readathon and then I went straight into sci-fi and then I read this halfway between a big fantasy book which I'll talk about in a second. So I was like, you know what, put that one down, pick up something that I can just devour in a couple of days, feel like I'm actually getting some work with my reading and this is so good. I, I knew I was going to like it to be fair, I've heard people talk about it, I was like that sounds like a contemporary that I'm really going to like and then I did. So that's always good. This follows three characters, it's multiple perspective and all three of them have the, their own home lives, their own sitches going on, their own situations but they find out that they're all brother and sister and it just it's just a really good family contemporary. All of the different characters have different things going on in their own personal families and then they're getting together and learning how to be a family themselves and it's just a really good book. It made me cry several times so you know it's a win. Also sometimes when books are multiple perspectives you kind of have that thing where you're like mm, I want to speed through this one because I like that person more but I didn't have this in this book. All three of the characters were really enjoyable. Whenever I got to their point of view I was just engaged. I never felt like I wanted to skip forward and go to somebody else's. So many different things to talk about in here. Teen pregnancy, foster care, adoption. It's just a good book, check it out. So next up, even though I had a TBR already set, I decided to join a readathon, but I only read two things for that readathon, so it's not too bad. One of those things was Demon Diary by some people, by Kara, which is an easy one to say, and Lee Chi Hyung. So that one's not too hard to say either. So I read this for the Get Graphic With It readathon. I managed to condense most of the challenges down to two things. This was one of them. This is volume two. I think I gave it like three stars. It wasn't as weirdly funny as the first one. There is a different writer in this one. The first one was done by somebody and then changed. So I don't know if that had some sort of impact on it. I still quite enjoyed it. It was still fun and the art's always fun. This is about a character that's meant to be like this evil demon lord person thing but then they're just really shit at it and they're just kind of like not very good at being evil and murdery and stuff. So they get mentored by somebody else who is a little bit angry and it's just a fun time. Next up, I finished that chunky fantasy that I was on about earlier in the video and that is Heirs of the Blade by Adrian Tchaikovsky. To be fair, it's not that big, it's only like just over 600 pages but this is book seven in the Heirs of the Power. No, it's not, that's my sister's book. Plug, 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 it's got the word Heirs in it. I accidentally said Heirs of Power. Go and buy it, came a cloud. This is the seventh book in the Shadows of the Apt series. That's the one, yes. Obviously I can't go too much into this book because, you know, seven out of ten. It's the seventh book in a ten book series. But this series in general is just really good. There's a lot of politics and life and different places and different kindred and different people and they all have these cool, like, powers. But they're not really powers, it's just a thing that their race has so that Ant Kingdom can all telepathically speak in each other's mind because, you know, ants. And then the Moth Kingdom can all fly because moths and see in the dark, that sort of business. And it's just really good. Basically from book one, the wasps are trying to take over, they're, they're an empire, they're trying to take over all the other kingdom spaces and there's a lot of war and politics and it's steampunky and there's always a fight in and people die and it's good. And you should check it out if you like fantasy because nobody ever reads this series or talks about the series or knows about the series. If you like fantasy and you want a big old chunky series, 10 books long, check out the Shadows of the App series. In this specific book we're in a place 
that we haven't really explored much yet so that was fun get to know the customs and the ways of a certain kingdom that we don't really know much about some cool stuff happens some crazy stuff happens some magical stuff happens it's the seventh book so i shall say no more next up the other thing i read for the get graphic with it readathon was i've got the words a series of unfortunate events in my head and that is not right but it is a long title not the gentleman's guide to vice and virtue it has got the word gentleman in it let's look at the front because i'm just blanking the league of extraordinary gentlemen volume one that is the bitch you may have heard of this because there was a film made of it which is quite different i mean for one they've got dorian gray in the film and, he, and he's not in the comics which i knew already but i give this one three stars it's like i enjoyed it but there wasn't anything really special about it the art wasn't really special and fun the storyline wasn't really that special it was just kind of like oh yeah going through the motions plodding along i think this is only a two volume series i have the other one so i'm sure i'll read that at some point but it's basically all these different people coming together and like the government's put them together and they're trying to do something they're trying to get something from someone there you go and this is the sort of artwork that's in here not my fave a bit old school also if you're from a nervous or easily offended disposition don't read this because there's a lot of bad things that happen women don't get treated the best it's set in the 1800s there's a lot of like casual rape and then it's not seen as a bad thing it's like oh yeah that's fine there's racism there's you know a lot of bad shit so don't read it if you don't want to read that sort of stuff it's just very casual about it just very flippant so if you're not into that don't pick it up Next up I read Sinner by Maggie Seavater. This is like a companion to the Forever Linger, whatever it's called, series. Shiver, that's the one I didn't say, that's the first book. It's a companion to that series and it follows one of the characters in that series and I enjoyed it. It's not my favourite Maggie Seavater but you know the Raven Cycle exists so of course not. This is very LA, rock star, reality TV, heavy and very light on the paranormal side of things so if you're just looking for a book that's paranormally werewolfy if you know anything about the shiver series that's what it's about then you may not enjoy this one i found it interesting i found it really quick to read it wasn't the best but i liked the characters in it so i enjoyed it i think i gave it like four stars but probably like the lower end of four but still four nonetheless it was engaging it was interesting there you go Next up I read Born a Crime by Trevor Noah which I've owned for ages and I'm so glad I finally read it. This is non-fiction, it's a bunch of essays about Trevor Noah's life in South Africa during the apartheid, after it, how that affected him being somebody with a white parent and a black parent and it's just so interesting. I read a large chunk of this in one sitting because I was just so engaged and it's just so easy to read but interesting and informative and anger inducing sometimes the way people are treated especially women and obviously people of colour but it's just it's a great book it's so quick to get through you fly through it i thought that it might take a little bit longer because it's non-fiction i was like oh let's try and blast through this and then i just blasted through it just because i was enjoying it so much and it was so engaging all of the essays in here were interesting or funny or poignant in their own way and it was just a really great collection of things the way they all kind of linked together and he put it together in this book was just really good and like i say i'm so glad i finally read it it was great and last but not least i read extras by scott westerfeld so i knew that this one would probably be a pretty quick book to read i was like right cram one more in and then i've read six off my 2019 tbr and i crammed it in and it worked this series in general is not my favorite i think i gave the first book like three stars the second book i gave four stars i thought it was a bit more interesting the third book just felt like a complete rehash of the second book this one does follow different characters, but then characters from the Ugly series do step in. I quite enjoyed this one. It was so quick to get through. And it was really weird because the portion of the story where it felt like the main thing was happening was like really small. But it didn't feel like all the beginning bit was filler because it was quite interesting. I liked it. It wasn't the best. This series just isn't the best for me, but I enjoyed it. I liked it more than the third book of the Ugly series. It was interesting to see how other people fare in this world. So in this world, oh no, I can't really say. I feel like the spoilers for the actual ugly series, even though it's like a million years old, so you've probably read it. This is set in a different place anyway, and it has a different system of how people are rated, and it's sci-fi, 
and stuff happens. It was alright, I quite liked it. So there we go, those are all the things that I read in October. Not a massive amount, but considering for the first like half of the month or three quarters of the month I felt like I was going to read about half a thing, not too bad. So let me know down below what you guys picked up in October or if you've read any of these, let me know your thoughts a bit. I would love to chat in the comments. If this is your first video by me and you enjoy it, please check out some of the others. And if you continue to enjoy them, please subscribe, that'd be awesome. Anyway guys, I'll see you in a few days with another video. Bye.